Hey guys, so I'm here with OES's very own Samantha Woodring, the star pole vaulter on the track and field team. Sammy, thanks for doing the interview. Appreciate that very much. Yeah, of course. Um, so first I was wondering, uh, when did you start um, pole vaulting? Yeah, so I started mid-track season my sophomore year. Um, only did six feet the whole high, sc or high school season, and then went into club, jumped eight six by the end of club. And kind of just kept on working with my club coach. Mm -hmm. And what what club were you doing with that? Um, it's a club in Oregon City called Willamette Striders. Mm -hmm. um, so for me, I have to drive out there twice a week during season, four days a week out of season. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Yeah, so it's it's a pretty big commitment. Yeah, for sure. Um, and so obviously, um, as a lot of us know, you're quite the skier. How did your um, how did your skills from skiing transfer over at all, if they did, and like? Um, what what about like your skiing training regimen or your experience in skiing um, made pole vaulting easy? Um, so my running form from skiing was not that fantastic. Mm -hmm. It took a lot of work to fix that because of just the positions that you're in for skiing are a lot different than what you need to be for running. Um, but what skiing really gave me was powerful lower body. Um, so. I had the lower body strength, I just needed to become more explosive, and that's what I've been working on throughout the past three years, mm -hmm. um, and it's started to kick in now, um, mm -hmm. but yeah. And so, prior to pole vaulting, were you spending a lot of time doing extracurricular activities for skiing, just like different dry land workouts and going up to the mountain a lot? Were you doing that prior to starting pole vaulting? Was that like your main focus? Yeah, so prior to starting pole vaulting, um, in like sixth grade, I started doing heavy dryland training, which meant I learned how to do pretty much anything with weights. Um, it was deadlifting, cleans, um, mm -hmm. bench press, everything I could do. Um, so by the time I think I was in seventh grade, I deadlifted 200 pounds when I mm -hmm. weighed around 120 myself. Mm -hmm. And I kind of just kept on working on getting that strength for my body. Um, and then my sophomore year, after my freshman year injury, I uh, decided I wanted to try a little bit harder that year. Because um, before I'd always just gone up after school to ski. Mm -hmm. um, and I missed every Friday that winter. Mm -hmm. um, so I missed over 30 days that winter mm -hmm. to get skiing done between training and races. Yeah. But uh, yeah, that kind of helped get me mentally prepared for training for pole vault just because like you have to step up your game you have to take the time you have to do the driving you have to every bit of it's just working mm -hmm. working working mm -hmm. and um so would you say right now like your your number one priority is pole vaulting in terms of your athletics yeah just getting for better sure. at that. okay yeah. and um so back when you were mainly a skier um and also just on top of the fact that um you were really successful um, last season skiing. You won, didn't you win every event in the state? Uh, last year, every event in the state. Mm -hmm. This year, um, two of the events, and then I placed third in the mm -hmm. So, so you, so you were obviously doing very well um, skiing. So, what, what caused you to decide to pursue pole vaulting as the priority as opposed to skiing, which you were already doing well at? Um, yeah, I think it was a lot of things. I've been skiing since I was two and racing since I was five so mm -hmm. burnout started to happen and also I was just kind of looking for something else to do in college I had gotten frostbite when I was about 12 years old and the cold started to really hurt and I was looking for just a change in my life mm -hmm. and um I my uncle was a pole vaulter and he tried to talk me into it and one day I was like okay I'll do it mm -hmm. and it felt incredible it mm -hmm. felt somewhat similar to skiing where like you're going fast you're flying um but also it had its unique aspects and it just immediately caught my eye mm -hmm. um and what advice would you give to someone that wants to start pole vaulting uh believe in yourself it's terrifying when you first think about it mm -hmm. but when you start doing it, it and you enjoy it it's incredible it feels mm -hmm. like you're flying and mm -hmm. if if you want to do it you just gotta step in and just say I can do this because you can it's totally f awesome and fun and doable mm -hmm. and so when I went to um went to watch you pole vault and take some shots um of you pole vaulting at, at Oasis only home track meet of the season so I noticed that um you seem to you seem to get very focused on particular things before you before you go like I heard you say um 
I heard you say, um, I'm waiting for something before you decide to go. Like, like, uh, talk us through that. Like, what are, what are you thinking about right before you go? And like, like, what are you, what exactly are you waiting for to know, like, it's a time to start and start running, um, for the vault? Yeah. Um, so one of the major aspects about vaulting is you're in the air. Um, so at the OES meet, there was a decent amount of wind and it was coming from a lot of directions. Um, so the, for me at that time, I was really waiting for the wind to just line up so it would be more behind my back, if anything, because um, it was coming in from the side a little bit, and that would have uh, possibly thrown me off of the mat. Mm -hmm. um, but when I'm getting ready and approaching the back end of the uh, runway where I'll start, I really think about just like my form, my technique, what I need to be fixing and critiquing myself um, so that I have everything in my mind before I run down the runway and take a jump. Is that why you requested that they put the flags in so you could see exactly where the wind was, which direction it was blowing in? Yeah, I was looking first at the flagpole, but we didn't have our flag mm -hmm. up, so I the flags definitely 100% helped mm -hmm. me out that day. Mm -hmm. And so what's your current PR in height? Um, so I've jumped 11.6 in competition, I've jumped 12.4 in practice, so I'm just waiting for it to all come together in a meet mm -hmm. and yeah. pull that off. Should be exciting. Um, and what 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 do you have to work on in order to increase the elevation at which you can vault? Like, what, what are the main yeah. things you're focusing on to get that to get that number higher? Um, so put like off season time. It's like fixing your run, uh, fixing your jump, making sure that you can jump higher, run faster, everything that you can do there on the runway. Um, so that you can get on bigger poles, and then during season, it's the little things. So what you do when you're taking off, um, so for me, that's extending both my arms so I can really bend the pole, and then what I do to get upside down and what I do when I'm upside down. Mm -hmm. And um, do you have any plans to continue pole vaulting collegiately after high school? Yeah, so I'll be uh, pole vaulting for TCU next year. Oh, that's exciting. Congratulations. So I'm really excited for that. Yeah. It's going to be a really cool experience. Mm -hmm. And, and how did the recruitment process go? It seems like it seems like for track and field, the recruitment's like a little simpler than other sports because you have like a defined number that says like that actually says a lot about like how good you are at what you're doing. So did you did you reach out to them? Did they reach out to you? How did that work? Yeah, so I didn't go through like the normal process mm -hmm. um, for athletes mainly in track because um, I visited my sophomore like before my junior season. So I was a junior, but I only had my soft year, sophomore year posting. So mm -hmm. I was technically, to them, I was jumping 9-6. Mm -hmm. um, and as a D1 school, they were like, we can't have a person jumping 9-6 and yeah. pay for you to vault and pay for the polls. So they kind of gave me the number 11. You have to be making 11 to walk on. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, I'll do it. And then I applied this year by myself, made it into the school, and then told the coach, I'm jumping 11. I've made it into the school. Can I walk on? And the coach was like, yeah. All right. So. All right. Well, that's very exciting. Uh, Sammy Woodring, everyone.